Father, we thank you for the song that have been sung. We thank you for the prayers that have been prayed. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you in giving. And now as we look into your word, we ask that it will fall upon the good soil of our hearts and that it will grow into a great oak by the living waters that we may live thereby. We thank you and we honor you for it all. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are into week number four of our series entitled, How to Pray When. Today we're going to be talking about something that has an effect on all of us. And we need to know and understand how important prayer is when we are in this situation. So my opening thought for today is when we are weak or ill in our body, we can pray for God to reveal himself as the healer and sustainer. I'm going to say it again. When we are weak or ill in our body, we can pray for God to reveal himself as the healer and sustainer. Yes. Amen. Thank you. When we started off, uh, our opening thought was when we are sick or ill in our bodies, we can pray for God to reveal himself as the healer and sustainer. Mm-hmm. Now, over this journey of these past four weeks, the first episode that we went into was called Transitions in Trust in Turbulent Times. And we talked about how when we're going through transitions in our lives that we should have opportunity, we should know how to pray during that time. And we introduced what we call the breath prayers. Where you take a scripture and you Say it to yourself as you're breathing in and out as a, as a method of getting your mind focused on what it is that you are asking God to interact with you regarding. Episode number two, we start talking about finding light in the shadows of loss. When you have lost a loved one uh, or you, a relationship has changed its dynamics and you now feel like it has been separated, ended, you have a time or an ability to pray during those times. Last week we talked about rays of hope in the valley of discouragement and we talked about sometimes when we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't fear any evil, However, sometimes God causes us to turn and go up the side of the valley instead of the low opening in order for us to get victory. And he gives us hope in the middle midst of our climbing so that we can have the victory. That takes us today. Today we're going to be looking at, we're going to be talking about having divine strength for fragile bodies. Divine strength for fragile bodies. Our definitions are as follows. The first definition is pray. Pray is in worship a solemn address to the supreme being consisting of adoration or an expression of our sense of God's glorious perfections, confession of our sins, supplication for mercy and forgiveness. Our next word is fragile. Fragile means easily broken or destroyed. Strength. Strength is the quality or state of being strong. The ability to do or to bear. Our last word is divine. Divine is of or belonging to God. Our scriptures that we're going to be going through today... uh, The first one is in Psalms, the 23rd chapter, starting at verse number 1. Our emphasis is on verse number 4 through 6, but I I just like reading the whole thing whenever I get to this one. And so it starts off with, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Next, let's go to Philippians, the second chapter, starting at verse number 25. And it says, I just thought about you that are using your, your, your um, your Bibles give you a chance to flip over there to Philippians. Philippians 2, 25 says this. I have thought it necessary to send to you Epip Epiphromitus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, and your messenger and minister to my need. For he has been longing for you all and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. Indeed, he was ill, near to death, but God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. So receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such men, for he nearly died for the work of Christ risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. Let's jump over to another song that I like. Um, for time, I cut it back, but if you could take a moment and just read Psalms 91 yourself, you'll, you'll, you'll get some good, some good things out of Psalms 91. Um, the Army kind of a, have made that the, 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 the pre-deployment thing that the chaplains would say over you, Psalms 91. They call it the soldier psalm. But we're going to start at verse 14 and, and go down through 16 just so I can continue on with where we're going. It says this, Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. The Lord says, I will protect him because... He knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that it will reside upon the good soul of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We have decided to establish as we're going through the course of these weeks breath prayers for you to use throughout the week and for those of you that are in the sermon notes you see the listing that we have thus far I want us to start off with this thing because it's very important for us to understand. There is a thought process that we need to discuss, that we need to uh, look at because it has placed people in a level of bondage that we do not want people to be in. Amen. Now, there is a, a, we can see throughout the New Testament the fact that there is a close connection between faith and healing, correct? Yes. We can see that. But we cannot conclude, we cannot say because a person did not get healing the way we thought they should have been healed, that there was sin or lack of faith on that person's behalf. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Now, I came up in an environment whereby when somebody prayed for you and you didn't immediately get healed, they told you that you wasn't believing. Mm -hmm. 
they told you that it was your fault that it didn't manifest. Now, I hope none of y'all else had to go through that, but I know I wasn't the only ones, but I ain't pointing no fingers at nobody. But I'm just saying, it is not your fault if it doesn't manifest the way that you believe that it should manifest. We have, we have come to the point where we think that if it don't happen our way, then we can't blame God because he's, he's, he's God. So we got to blame somebody. And so we always look to blame ourselves. But I want you to understand that it is not, healing is, is not based upon the fact that you desire to have it. Healing is based upon God's mercy toward us. Yes, yes. I, I knew y'all weren't going to like this. Yes, yes. But it's, it's the truth. It, it, it's, God's mercy is what manifests the healing that we are desiring. And I'm not just talking about healing, or I'm not just talking about sickness or illness in the fact that it's a cold, it's uh, COVID, it's, it's any of those things. Some of us are sick in our minds. Yes. Some of us are sick in our emotions. And, yes. and some of us have things in our uh, life that we are tired of and we need God to work on it. But every time we yes. want God to work on it because he doesn't do it the way that we want it done, we get mad like a little kid with a basketball and walk away with our ball and say, I don't want to play anymore. Yes, yes. I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I'm just talking about observations. Yes. Because sometimes we want to walk by sight and not by faith. Right. It don't look like I'm healed. It doesn't feel like I'm healed. So I must not be healed. And... I, we have to go through what the process that God has for us to go through in order for us to be conformed to the image of Christ. Amen. A, a very quick example, Paul has this young man, Ephroditus, who was sick. He did not say that he was a bad man. He doesn't say he was a he, he doesn't say anything negative that there was some kind of pressing sin in his life or anything. The man was sick. And he describes him as a friend, a brother, somebody, and he says that he is happy that God healed him and God showed mercy towards him and he was healed. I don't want us to get wrapped around the fact that we sometimes we use the Bible like a witch uses her spell book. We look into the Bible and say, if I say this, then God has to do this. But that is how the enemy has wrapped our minds around us having greater power than the Father himself. That God has to do what we tell him to do because we know more than God. Now we don't say that because that's not the right thing to say, but that's how we act. For instance, we'll sit up here and say, God, you got to heal me because by his stripes I am healed. So if you're not healing me, then God, something must be wrong with you because I'm calling you out according to your word. Have you ever in your life lived in a moment where you told your parent that you said, you said this and you better do it? Some of, some of y'all have flashbacks all of a sudden. That's what you wanted to say, but you knew that you would not be able to see tomorrow if you got yourself into that predicament. You walk up to your parent, I don't, your parent could be 100 years old right now, and you go up there and tell your parent, you need to do this, you better do this because you said it. And 
100 years old, they'll jump up out that bed and show you <laughs> something real quick. They'll have a flashback. That's right. So how is it that we can say, Lord, you said in your word, this is what we do. We said in your word, by his stripes we are healed. Right? Yes. That's what it says. By, your, by his stripes we are healed. So how come I'm not healed, Lord? He said, now, see, y'all remember that story I told y'all about my fourth grade teacher, Mr. Weingartner? And I told you about him telling me about the, he's going to give us a Snickers tomorrow. Y'all remember that, right? Yep. Now, the Bible is telling us the process by which we are healed. It's not saying that if you say this, that it is going to make you healed. Y'all catching that? Yeah. Yeah. What our responsibility is, is to turn over what it is that we're going through to God and allowing him to use that for his glory. Y'all not liking me right now, but that's okay. Because the understanding is, okay, I'm going through, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to talk to God about what I'm going through. That is what we're supposed to do, correct? Right. But because it doesn't happen in the space or the time that we desire for it to happen, we get an attitude. We get angry. We start pouting. We start acting like God owes us something. And... Because we have this attitude, it actually inhibits us, prohibits us, sets up a barrier, barrier around us so that God's mercy cannot come in. Uh, now, I know I, I said that, you know, we're going to have divine strength for our fragile bodies. But... The fragility of our bodies, the weakness of, of our bodies is the fact is that we want what we want when we want it. Come on now, make it plain. Divine strength means that God knows what we need and how we need it. And we need to operate in the fact that even when I'm having an ailment in my body, I still trust God. I trust Him. I still believe because his mercies are renewed every morning and great is his faithfulness and that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Because of these things, I can continue to go on. There's a young lady named uh, Johnny Erickson Tata and Jonah Joni, Erica, yeah, all that. Her, this young lady in her early days became a quadriplegic because of a skiing accident. And she has gone on, her ministry has been, I know that God is healing me because I'm able to touch other people's lives and cause a change in their lives. Mm -hmm. Now, she said in the beginning, she thought differently, and it was all about her. But then when she focused on the God of all flesh, she saw that God was using her condition in order for her to have a desire to help other people. See, we don't, we don't want to think about how God's looking at the big picture, right. and we're only looking at ourselves. But God's divine strength for our fragile bodies is that he knows how delicate you are. Yes, and because he knows how delicate you are, he knows how far he can take you, push you, and process you to make you into what he desires for you to do and to desire for you to operate. He, he says that even when you are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, that he's going to be with you. That even when you are in the presence of your enemies, he's going to make a table for you. He's going to provide you with opportunity. He's going to, and they're still talking about you. They're still saying all these things, but you're okay because you are in the presence of God. Yes, yes, exactly. We can feel when we are weak, when we are going through 
I have not seen a person when they are have a cold or the flu run around and act like nothing is wrong. Sometimes, and, and this, is, this is the stereotype of men, is that, that men are all strong until they get sick. Then they revert back to a little kid. Uh, I'm cold. Uh, <laughs> you know, and they act all. But God is like this. God is saying, even in the midst of that, I can spend time with you. I can help you. I can assist you. And I can help you to become all that I want you to be. Because we know that God's desire is to operate in our lives and to help us to become all that he wants for us to be. Yes. Even in the midst of us being weak, God says, in your weakness, I am made strong. Yes. Yes. So whose strength do you want to rely on? Your strength? Or you want to rely on God's strength. God's strength. You can't have both strengths. Strength. You got to only have one. You can't have them both. So do you want your strengths or you want God's strengths? You want somebody say I want God's strength. All that other, all that extra words you putting on there, you can you can forget that. I just want His strength. I don't need you to add all the emphasis on there, because it is important to us to realize that as I don't try to make it happen, and I say, God, I'm just going to lean on you, and Father, I ask that Your mercy will be upon me, so that. As I'm going through this and as I'm wanting to fix this for myself, that I can just lay in your arms and cast this upon you because I know you care for me. Right. Amen. There are people that have what we call chronic conditions. That means conditions that have happened years over years over years. And you can look at some people and their chronic C condition has caused them to not want to do anything, not want to interact with anybody because I got this condition. And then you watch something like the Paralympics and see folks that are performing with without it. limbs. I, listen, let me tell y'all what I saw on the Paralympics. Mm -hmm. I saw a man swimming without no arms. Yep. Then I saw another person swimming without no legs. Now, if somebody would have came out there with some no arms and no legs and talked about they was going to swim, I, I was going to be done. But my, my thing was, they did not let what we perceived as a condition or an illness stop them. They still did what it was right. they wanted to do. That's right. The same thing it should be with us. Yes. We're going through something in our body. We All of us want our bodies to function perfectly, but... Because they are decaying, because they're fragile, because some of us didn't take care of them the way we were supposed to when we were growing up, there are some things, some, 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 some deficiencies in our bodies. Okay. But that does not stop God's mercy from manifesting in our lives. And it should not stop us from doing what God has called right. for us mm -hmm. to do. There are some things in our lives that we can't figure out, but all we can do is lean on God and say, God, I can't figure it out, but I'm going to trust you to work it out in my life. Now, I want to end up today to, just to tell you something very important. A name is very important. The, a name provides definition. A name provides ability to say what something qualifies for. We had a young lady uh, when I was growing up who I went through uh, 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 middle school with. Her name was Brandy Shoemaker. That was her name. And so we guessed that her family history was probably, guess what? They could have been cobblers, they could have been blacksmiths, but a name provides a definition. Mm -hmm. And so we want to realize that God knows our name. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. God knows our name. Yes, he, does. he knows your real name. Mm -hmm. 
Not the name that everybody gave you. You're not Bubba. You're not. See, I almost said it. See, we, we got a family thing going on right now. I almost threw it out there. We, you're not Jaquan. Your name is your name. Just because Elizabeth can't say your name properly, we got to ensure that we still know your name. There are people today that are called by the name that they have given them, but it's not really their name. But God wants to call you, not, but he wants to call it. See, I, I can't do it because, okay, anyway. <laughs> we want to operate in the fact that God knows our name. And what he means, he knows us intimately. Yes, he right. knows who we are. That's he right. knows the struggles that we're having. And in this fragile body we have, he will give us his divine strength to continue on. He knows your name. Yes, he does. So that ties into the breath prayer that I, I came up with this week. My, the breath prayer that I came up for this week says, God holds me tightly and will deliver me. And my exhale is, he knows my name. He knows it. Yes, he does. Inhale, God holds me tightly and will deliver me. Exhale, he knows my name. Isn't it comforting to know that God knows your name? It's comforting when you're going through something and you're thinking you're all alone and you hear somebody say, your name. Amen. Now, I don't mean in the trouble, you know, when they say your whole name when you're in trouble, that's not what I'm meaning. I'm meaning <laughs> that when they say it and you know it's somebody that's going to be there to be with you. Now, everybody else may know you as Bubba, but there's somebody that knows you based upon the name that they gave you when you came into this world. They might know you as Skeeter all around the place. But when that person that knows you calls your name, yes, yes. you know you are in a good place. Amen. God's divine strength for our fragile body is that he knows us and that his mercy endured through all generations. His mercy yes, is yes. following us all the days of our lives. His mercy... Yes. Gets up in the, when you get up, the Bible says his mercies are renewed every morning. Great is his faithfulness. So when you get up, mercy's coming right along with you to be with you, to watch over you. You may not be able to walk as fast as you used to could walk. You may not even be able to walk at all, but God's mercy is still with you. Yes, it is. How do we pray when we're going through? We pray that God, in my weakness, yes. you are made strong. Yes. Let them not see this crippled, fragile body, but let them see your glory yes. shining in front of their faces. Why? Because it's all about you and not about me. Yes. That's right. All about you and not about me. When we started off, we started off with our opening thought and we said when we are weak or ill in our body, we can pray for God to reveal himself as a healer and sustainer. And I want to do as the final thought this. As a Christian, I wholeheartedly believe in God as the ultimate healer. And I am confident in seeking his intervention through prayer for healing. I am confident in seeking his intervention through prayer for healing. Healing my mind, healing my emotions, healing whatever needs to be. God, I know that you, and because of your mercy, can heal whatever is ailing me. And when he heals it, he causes it 
to not have the effect that it had before. Yeah. Now you may have, like, you may be like uh, uh, Jacob and still have a limp because of what you've been through, right. but right. the effect right. of the limp is showing that God's glory is upon you, That's not that. the fact that you are deficient. I want to just tell you this very important thing. That in order for us to operate in the, the, the fact of God's mercy has the ability to keep us healed and in a good place. We have to. We need to. It is a requirement that we have a relationship with Jesus. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Saved means to be rescued, to be delivered, to be accepted into the family of the kingdom. The Bible also says, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and, and is saved, and that everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And it also tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God's glory is standing. We all need Jesus in our lives. Yes, yes. So today, I, I, I'm, I'm imploring you, I'm admonishing you, I'm encouraging you to make that decision if you have not made it before. And because of that, I want you to also understand that this is not an individual event, but it's a team sport. We want to come alongside you and assist you along this journey. Mm -hmm. We want to support you as you learn and grow and become all that God has called for you to be. So let us know that you've made that decision by texting the word BELIEVE to 864-528-9300. That's 864 528-9300, the word of belief, will come alongside you no matter where you are in the world and assist you along this journey. Friends and family, that's episode number four, Divine Strength for Our Fragile Bodies in the books. God's mercy, even in the midst of you going through what you're going through is there for you right in the boat of mercy, the, 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 the car of mercy, the cradle of mercy, however you want to say it. Just get into let God's mercy just overshadow you and keep you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Because it will. Because it's renewed every morning. Mm. Some of y'all know how, how them subscriptions go. They automatically renew. That's how God's. It's automatic renewal. Hallelujah. It's an automatic renewal. You, you only had to put a credit card up there. It's already been paid for. It's already right there for you. Next week, we'll be concluding this series, and we'll be talking about uh, how to pray when you're doubting. How to pray when you're doubting. So come on by, either via online or come on to 642 Fairview Road, come hang out with us next uh, Sunday and we will definitely talk about how to pray when doubting. And until that time, God's blessings be upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.